Okay, so I'm moving on now to showing you how I paint up shields. So you can see here I'm going for a very kind of um, orangey yellow colour. Again, I, I want it to be bright, but I also need it to look dirty. And that's why getting a grey base is a good idea for this. So as you can see here, I've got my uh, model that I'm doing all this on and I've got five colours here although one of these colours this one in particular isn't really going to be used for the shield itself it's just going to be the eyes so I'm going to start off with some Griff Hound Orange now this one's not open so I'm going to use my uh, open pot here you can actually see the actual colour is shifted on this one that's never been opened you can also tell that I plan on using a lot of this stuff because I've got another one ready, spare for the future. Okay, so I'm really shaking that up just to make sure that it's it's you know perfectly ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying this contrast down. Again, I don't need an amazing paintbrush to achieve this. I'm just gonna get a bit of wet, wet in it and then I'm going to start now again I'm using a contrast over a dark grey and this is just to get the first layer down to get the tone I'm going to try and get between those teeth I'm actually going to Kind of highlight those teeth without yellow uh, later in a kind of a bone colour. You'll notice that the colour of these shields on the like official paint scheme for Stormbringer is a red colour, a very squiggy red colour. Um, however, I don't personally feel that it's going to work against purple, so I'm getting a more orange complexion to it. Then I'm going to have to, I want to make sure that the edge of this is a bit better picked out. Trying to be careful not to get on that tassel there. I'm probably going to paint that tassel purple later on to match his clothing. And the trick is here to very carefully get into this shield recesses. Now I'm trying to not get on that metal there. And I've just realised actually that I didn't um, get the colour. The, the bronzed effect on that shield before, so I'm going to have to go back and do that. Okay, I'm trying to get a bit of darkness into here because obviously this is the shadows. So I'm going to go a bit thicker with my paint <clears throat> so now I've got a Okay, and there we go. That is our first layer. Um, you can see the kind of um, grey is really sort of sticking outwards, and that's what I really want. I want the the kind of the wash to flow into the deep parts, but I want the grey to be quite prominent for now, um, and it'll just add a nice effect later on, or at least I hope it will. Now, I've got to decide what what other metals that I would potentially do. So on this one, I don't see any other metals but there are a couple of them where I might want to 
also did this orangey colour somewhere else, but on this one I'm quite happy with that. Problem is now, I'm going to have to wait for that contrast to dry. Right, so the next thing that I need to do here is add some Troll Slayer Orange. Now, this is again going to be a watered down colour. So I've got my wet palette over here all the time for watering down colours. Now can you see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it to kind of penetrate into the brush. Now. trying to do is I'm just trying to get that nice and filled now now I'm trying to avoid certain areas like you can see the nostrils I'm just trying to avoid the nostrils of the shield and I'm trying to not get it inside the mouth and you can see though what it's doing is it's further <clears throat> further picking out those sort of um, outward parts and then again turning it over I'm going to get along the shield rim now when I try and get into the recesses here I want it to kind of be as thin as possible means I'm probably going to pick more paint up off my wet palette than my pot now and that's because this is in the shadow so it's not going to be quite as you know strong in its colour okay and then again bringing it back around I need to try and get into that recess there which is going to be difficult but I can do it if I'm careful then sometimes a lot of people like to paint before gluing now certain things like shields I would normally do before gluing but I'm I'm more of a person who likes to paint with the model built because I think it helps you get the shading right okay and you can see now I've got a I'm starting to to brighten the shield up but you can still see that darker orange kind of underneath in key places okay let's see if this is ready to do the dry brushing now so Thing is, because I've used some very watered down paint, I really do need to make sure that that is dry before I start hitting it with the dry brush. So it does look to me like it's dry. So what I've got is I've got some Fire Dragon Bright. Now, this is going to kind of go in two ways there. So... I need to get my dry brushing. I need to obviously get this colour to penetrate. So what I'm doing first and foremost, I'm actually getting the dry brush wet to get some of the paint inside it and then kind of run it off the excess. Okay, now I can find out if I've got enough by just starting to dry brush. Now I'm going to try and go downwards. So that it feels like I'm working towards the light. So a bit more than that because it's not going on quite as much as I want. Let's 
thing about dry brushing, you have to make sure that you've got enough on there to actually put something on it, but not so much that you're painting with it like normally. There we go, it's starting to go on now. You'll notice that my stroke is just in, trying to go in one direction to suggest that this is the direction of light on the model. Okay, and you can see it's starting to pick up some lovely colour now. Now, as far as the back of the shield, I don't want that to be as much. So I'm just going to do this one point where I think the light would probably still get to it. Try and do it around the rim. Now that little bit there, the rim there is going to be hard to get into with a dry brush as you might guess. But there we go, you can see that uh, it's very easy to get that dry brush applied. And hopefully it won't take that long for that to dry. And then I can move on to using my, my contrast to brighten it up a bit. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Imperial Fist to really brighten this up because although it's done in some very nice shades of orange because of the grey on the coat it's got a kind of drabness to it and that's not what I'm going for on this one. So I'm going to get this and I don't really want this watered down actually. I want it actually to be quite heavy and then what I'm going to do is I'm really going to push it around in particular I want to get the top of this the edges of course I don't want it pooling too much I mean that's not the aim here but I really want to use this contrast to completely sharpen the colours Again, I don't want to go too much into this recess because it is supposed to be dark. So you can see I'm going a lot gentler with my brush as I reach in, only using the tip. There we go. <clears throat> okay, now what's going to happen is that's going to take a little bit longer to dry because of the obviously because of how wet it is but once it's dry it's going to start looking more like this it's going to start to pop outwards a lot more so as you can see what's happening there now is we've got a kind of very nice vibrant colour going on and then all that I like to do at the end because obviously I've added that yellow to brighten things up but now what I'm going to do I'm just going to reapply a little bit of that dry brush that I had before just so I 
can basically just get my highlight and get a little bit of that highlight back to make it pop just the way I want it to at the end. Just finishes creating that illusion. Okay, that's just how I want it now. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is I also want it to be a little bit more vibrant than that, which is why I've got my dawn yellow. Now there's two ways that I'm going to apply this dawn yellow. As you can see, it's it's always kind of like, it, it's right there, isn't it? But as you can see, this just slightly has a better ting to it. Now, part of that is because I've added other colours to kind of, you know, like, um, create a, an offset to the orange. But I tend to find as well... I want to just add a bit of yellow, of this dawn yellow, not too much. That's my final dry. You can see that I'm picking up his eye at this, the eyes of the shield at the same time. And that's what gave me that final little, I suppose, um, pop. Now, I'm going to paint the little eyes on this thing, which is this the part where I start like not enjoying myself because I tend to have very, unfortunately, not very stable hands. moment where I have to slow my breathing right down into manageable breaths I swear the eyes. Uh, I'm going to add a little red down to the middle of them as well just to give it a bit of sharpness. So I think the red that I went for was yeah it's this evil suns so might as well Finish off the little details now that I'm here. Just as a little tip, you shouldn't stop breathing while doing this, you just slow your breathing down. Since I've got my red, I might as well do that eye. Uh, 
There we go. Great. <laughs> Now, I'm going to move on from there. So, the next thing I want to do is just to, you know, because obviously I might as well finish this shield while I'm on it. I'm going to get some Monfrang Brown. Again, get it on my wet palette and then. This is where I'm going to do these. Said what I'm trying to do is control my breathing rather than hold my breath. It's a bad habit that I used to have when I was first starting painting out that when I did little details I assumed that you know hold your breath to keep your body still. And then after a while I realised that what's happening is you're not really getting like you know a proper flow of oxygen and blood and that'll of course make you shaky later on so the best thing is, is to just manage your breathing okay I'm just gonna try since I've got this color out here to get these little teeth Oh, very relaxing. That's why I like painting. It kind of calms me down so well. Okay, and then I'm not going to do anything too special to finish off the teeth on here. Okay, I'm just going to get myself whoop, some basically wraith bone base. I'm just gonna. I was thinking I'd do more shading on the teeth, but actually, I found that if I just get a bit of wraith bone base and make sure it's watered a bit, very gently.
Same again, since I got this colour out, I might as well just very quickly finish his teeth over here. I hate doing details this small with the camera on. You mess up and that's it. It's going to wreck so many problems but I think I might have successfully done it <sighs> Whew. I did it right great often that I can do that while I'm using a camera I find it very stressful right we are almost done with this. It is looking nice, right? And then just to do one final flourish. I'm just gonna dry over a bit of Dawn Yellow onto those teeth on the shield. Now, I can't use a big dry brushing brush, but so I'm going to have to use like this. It's the same technique, basically. Just trying to add a bit of yellowing to it. I'm actually quite, going quite heavy with this for a dry brush, but it will create the effect that I want then. There. And that is how I actually create the shield for my crew boys. Hope you like that, and please like and subscribe.